This is Katya. And this is Maurice. <laughs> Tomorrow will be their last day. It was a, about a year and a half, almost two years from the inception to completion. Our kind of key core crew were our two editors, Aaron Casper and Jocelyn Chapu, my two producers, Shane Boris and Ina Fitchman, and our two executive producers, Greg Boosted and Jessica Harrop. We were thrilled to work with Miranda July as our narrator for Fire of Love. We probably watched about 250 uh, hours of, of footage. About 200 of that was original footage that Katya and Maurice Kraft shot. And then about 50 hours was recordings and documentaries, television broadcasts of Katya and Maurice themselves. They will leave behind hundreds of hours of footage, thousands of photos, and a million questions. I love this documentary. I did not know about the craft story. What was it that appealed to you about them? Um, first, it was their spectacular imagery that they captured. Um, just the way that they depicted the volcanoes through the camera was unlike anything I'd ever seen. They dared to get so close and their love and passion for their subjects was so palpable coming through the lens. But it was also them as people. Um, they're so pl playful at once, philosophical, so wise. Uh, hilarious. We really kind of adored them as individuals, as well as the uniqueness of their relationship. There was one line in a book that Maurice wrote where he said, for me, Katia and volcanoes, it is a love story. And that line kind of formed like the thesis for the film. We thought we could tell a love triangle story, you know, a story about these two humans who also have a love relationship with a volcano. And that was um, both a creative challenge, but also an opportunity that, that seemed really exciting for us to, to get to tell a story about what it means to, to be in love with the earth. They meet on a blind date at a cafe. From here on out, life will only be volcanoes, volcanoes, volcanoes. Were you aware of how much, I guess, archival footage was out there, as well as their own footage they'd shot in 16 millimeter film? We had heard that they had shot about um, 200 hours of 16 millimeter footage, but we hadn't seen much of it before. And that we, and we knew that they were celebrities in, in France and, and throughout Western Europe uh, from the late 60s all the way through the late 80s. So um, we knew a little bit about them, but we had no idea until we actually started watching the footage, just the wealth of material that we had on our hands. And it was truly, it was such an extraordinary journey to, to really get to, to see all the footage. Many people don't know that like, you know, that 16 millimeter footage came without sound or like, I guess even explanation and it wasn't in some order. Talk about navigating your way through that yeah, so first I worked with two fabulous editors, Aaron Casper and Jocelyn Chapu, um, and, and together we watched just, just the, the hundreds of hours of footage and tried to make sense of all of these pieces. Because there wasn't sound, uh, we had to do a ton of research to try to really understand what we were looking at. Luckily, Katya and Maurice provided that information for us. They authored nearly 20 books. Um, there's many biographies about them. There's documentaries that had been made about them, about, you know, when, when they were alive. But uh, we, we tried to rely actually on some of the tropes and hallmark style of the French New Wave as a guide. The French New Wave very much formed the cultural backdrop when Katya and Maurice were coming of age. Um, but one of the, the hallmarks of that aesthetic movement was associative editing. And for us, when we had all of these pieces from all around the world, uh, beautiful imagery, but, but a lot of times um, we would be met with juxtapositions that didn't quite make sense to us. Uh, we would kind of be guided by a sense of intuition about how to put those together. Jocelyn and Aaron went to painstaking lengths too to build sound design since there wasn't sync sound. They meticulously researched, you know, the type of car that they drove and, and what that engine sounded like or, or how these specific volcanoes would erupt. And, and they pulled from... Uh, you know, volcano sounds libraries that they had. Um, so they really almost did kind of like an architectural job building these very layered sequences of sound, um, understanding the, the narrative potential and then absolute need for, for sound and telling the story. You tell this compelling narrative about the two of them, but then you also give us this window into volcanology. And it was like, wow, this is I, like, it changed my perspective on, on volcanoes. Um, at first we actually had a lot more science in the film. However, we quickly found that that um, 
it, it kind of congested the story in a bit. Uh, the, the, the trusted viewers that we shared the film with felt like they couldn't quite access the characters as much. There was just so much going on that we needed to clear more narrative space. So we started pairing back a little bit more and decided to kind of crystallize the story of um, volcanology, you know, first and foremost through Katia and Maurice's experience. Um, of course, there's a wide and diverse field of volcanology, and we would never want to undermine the tremendous work um, of volcanologists and, and geologists and geoscientists around the world. But we thought if we really just focused on their personal story, people could learn some things about volcanology, but also know that they're just a piece of, of this bigger field. It's very dur to volcanologues who live together, because it's very volcanic, so frankly, it makes eruptions very often. And you mentioned Miranda July as your narrator. I mean, what made her the perfect person to tell their story? Uh, I could go on and on about my adoration for, for Miranda. She's an artist whose work spoke to me for many years. I think particularly, I love how through her writing and the characters she crafts in her film, she communicates such a poignant sense of um, the, the strangeness and the beauty as well as the precarity of human relationships. So much of her work deals with kind of um, how incredible and beguiling it is actually to be alive um, and also to, to be in love. And she brought all of that in her performance to Fire of Love um, as she worked with our narration. So we were so thrilled to, to have her on board as our narrator. In this world lived a fire. And in this fire, two lovers found a home. How did working on Fire of Love change your perspective on volcanoes or love for volcanoes? I still cannot believe our planet looks like this, quite honestly. Um, watching hundreds of hours of their footage and still absolutely enchanted. I feel like what I learned about volcanoes is just how sentient and alive the earth is and how powerful. And I feel quite Quite honestly, I feel much closer to the forces of creation and destruction thanks to their imagery. And for me, there's something uh, quite spiritual in that. But I think for Katya and Maurice, what I've learned most is they've really showed me what it means to live a meaningful life and also die a meaningful death. And so much of that was about pursuing volcanoes, this dangerous force that they knew was beyond human understanding, as they put it. They knew that they could never quite fully understand, yet they went towards it, knowing that that journey towards understanding brought them a sense of love. And so that, that's one thing, along with volcanoes, that I will forever take away and forever be so grateful for. Nous fait remarquer que nous sommes fous de rester là. Et pourtant, nous restons. 